Surprisingly, Stellar Blade doesn't use Unreal Engine 5. Instead, it uses the much older Unreal Engine 4. And the developers still managed to implement all of the new features that we are used to seeing in the latest games, such as shader pre-compilation, frame generation, and upscaling. The game has an impressive number of settings, but as you will see, most of them barely make a difference to image quality or even performance. As the game is built on Unreal Engine 4, its graphics definitely show that, as it doesn't look anywhere near as graphically impressive as most recent games do. And gameplay-wise, it's the same story, especially its level design, which feels like you're playing a PS3 game. This can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on your taste in games. As for CPU performance, using the R5 3600X gets to around the upper 60s to 80 FPS before it starts to bottleneck. And given what's going on in game, while it is acceptable, it's only doing so at around 50% CPU usage, meaning there is a lot of potential CPU performance left unutilized. And stutter-wise, the game only seemed to suffer from some momentary stutters when switching from gameplay to cutscenes, and nothing worthy of mentioning during gameplay. So, it's generally well optimized in that regard. Now let's get into the settings. Starting with the upscaling, native TAA looks unstable and suffers from a lot of shimmering. FSR 3 quality also suffers from shimmering, as well as more visual issues and a softer overall image while DLSS 4 quality looks the most stable and has the least amount of issues. Here's another scene so you can better see the difference between the upscaling techniques. As for the motion test, native TAA suffers from obvious and long ghosting behind the character. FSR 3 quality suffers from shorter but sharper trailing behind the character, making it look very harsh on the eyes. DLSS 4 quality also suffers from these issues, but it is not as bad as the other upscalers. Use DLSS 4 if your GPU supports it, as it is clearly the best upscaler, and I'm sorry for those of you who don't have an RTX GPU for this game. The environment object detail setting controls the complexity of some objects in the environment, no matter the distance from the character. Low makes objects look really simple, while medium looks okay. I recommend using high, as it has a negligible impact on performance. For the character level of detail setting, I tested a few different scenes and I wasn't able to find any difference it made at any distance to any characters, to either performance or image quality. Keep this one on high for now. The environment texture setting gradually increases texture resolution with each option, while the highest option only makes a subtle increase to texture resolution at a large impact to VRAM usage. And even with 12GB of VRAM, the game gives a warning about potentially exceeding VRAM usage. I recommend using very high to be safe, and only use the 4K option if you have no issues with VRAM consumption at your settings and resolution. The character texture setting mainly increases the resolution of characters' clothes. Each option looks kind of low res, except for the very high option, and thankfully, it seems to have almost no impact on VRAM usage, at least in this scene, so use very high. The clutter density setting seems to only control the amount of foliage, as far as I could tell. On low, the environments can look a tad empty, while medium and high look acceptable. Each option comes with a measurable performance impact, so I recommend using medium for the best balance. The environmental object visible distance setting controls the amount of objects that can be seen in the environment and their level of detail. Lower values can even avoid rendering entire major objects and structures. When reaching values over 50, the improvements start to become really hard to notice, but thankfully, 
even when maxed out, the performance impact is very small, so keep it maxed out. The character visible distance setting doesn't appear to make any difference to the rendering distance of characters or to performance, at least from the scenes that I was able to test in the first two areas of the game. Keep it maxed out for now. The shadow quality setting looks very basic up to the medium option, while on high and very high, the shadows look very detailed, but their performance impact is large. Since there aren't any visual issues on the lower options, I recommend using medium for the best balance. The lighting quality setting controls the amount and distance of spotlights visible in the scene and it doesn't affect performance in any measurable way, so keep it maxed out. The volumetric fog looks blocky on all options and going from medium to high looks almost identical while slightly lowering FPS, so use medium for the best balance. The particle quality setting increases particle quality and density with each option. On low, it definitely looks like something is missing in the explosions, while on medium and high, they look very similar. I also tested a few different scenarios, but this is the only scene where I found a noticeable impact on particles. Thankfully, performance is basically unimpacted even on high, so use high for the best visuals at no extra cost. The animation quality setting doesn't seem to affect anything, not the frame rate of distant characters, creatures, nor foliage. Keep this on high for now. The ambient occlusion setting gradually increases its accuracy and quality with each option. Avoid low as it can make everything look a bit too harsh, while medium and high make the surfaces look a bit more blended. I don't know why this setting affects overall surface roughness, but it does. Outdoor scenes are even more subtle, and the changes aren't as noticeable as when indoors. Performance wise, high can have a small but measurable impact depending on the scene, so keep it on medium for the best balance. The depth of field looks a bit blurry on low and medium, while it looks a lot more pleasing to the eye on high. Now it does have a measurable impact to performance, but it's worth it. Otherwise, the lower options can negatively impact image quality, as they are too blurry. The screen space reflections look gradually better with each option, and thankfully, there is zero impact to performance between low, medium, and high, which is why I recommend high for this setting. And here are the optimized settings. And let's not forget the legend Chirpy for being a supporter on Patreon for quite a while now. For also doing so, you get to download and watch these types of optimization videos at their highest quality without the YouTube compression and have your name in them just like Chirpy here, among other benefits. Now for the benchmarks. At native 1440p, using the optimized settings only made a minor improvement to frame rates. Looks like this game is not very scalable, except when using upscaling, which is gonna be your last and only hope to increase performance. Using DLSS quality increased performance by a further 45% or so, letting us go from around a 60 FPS average to around 87. I think Stellar Blade is a generally well optimized game, but it could have used from a few more meaningful settings. What do you guys think?